Hey, what's up everybody? This is Audrey. Welcome back to our video course, Networking with URL Session. URL Session data task is meant for short tasks, like authenticating the user or fetching a token. Data tasks save their response in memory. In this part of the course, we'll learn about URL Session download task and URL Session upload task. Download tasks save the results to a file, and upload tasks let you upload a data object or a file. Let's get started. In the demo, we'll add the download task in the Halftunes app that downloads a song and implement the pause, resume, and cancel buttons. A URL session has methods to create a download task similar to those for data task. Download tasks store the response data in a file, so a download task with URL or request and completion handler gets back a URL instead of a data object. This is the location of a temporary file, so the completion handler must either read and process the data in it or copy the file to a permanent location in your app's container directory. The custom delegate version of download task with URL or request is for more complex transfers where you need to monitor progress or handle intermediate response data. The session must have a custom delegate that implements the relevant delegate methods. We'll learn how to use custom delegates in the next part of this course. Download task has a cool feature. If it's canceled or fails before completing the download, you can save resume data and resume the download later. Unlike data tasks, download tasks convert server-side errors into NS error objects and report them via their error parameter. Like download task with completion handler, upload task with completion handler don't use delegate methods for response and data delivery but delegate methods for handling authentication challenges are still called. But note the differences between upload and download task methods. You can't create an upload task with URL because you must set the HTTP method to post or put, so you have to create a URL request. Upload task methods have an additional parameter for specifying the data that will be uploaded. This is the data that you would put into the request's HTTP body for a data task. So this saves you having to write that statement. Instead of a data object, you can create a task to upload a file. And there's also a streamed request option. Streaming is outside the scope of this course. Now we're working with more complex tasks. This is a good time to look at priority settings. You can suggest priority levels at different levels of the URL session hierarchy. The session configuration can tell the system that it's transferring a specific type of data, and the operating system can use this info to set priorities and balance performance against battery load. A session task can ask for a priority level on the server that these are class constants, default priority, low priority, and high priority. Low priority is greater than zero, but less than default priority. High priority is greater than default priority and less than one. A URL request can override its session's configuration network service type. For example, the session configuration might be video, but a request might be prefetching, so sets its network service type to background. In a later video, we'll see that a session's delegate queue is an operation queue, so you can specify a quality of service value to indicate its importance to the user. Larger downloads can make good use of a cache to reduce network traffic. A default configuration object uses a persistent disk-based cache of responses to requests. The cache allows an app to reduce its dependency on a network connection and increase its performance. The default cache policy is to use the protocol's cache policy, and the protocol is usually HTTP. This flowchart is from Apple's documentation, pretty much the way you'd expect a cache to be used. If a cached response does not exist for the request, the URL loading system fetches the data from the, originating, from the originating source. Otherwise, if the cached response does not indicate that it must be revalidate, revalidated every time via a response header, and if the cached response is not stale past its expiration date, the URL loading system returns the cached response. If the cached response is stale or requires validation, the URL loading system makes a head request to the originating source to see if the resource has changed. If so, the URL loading system fetches the data from the originating source. Otherwise, it returns the cached response. 
the other cash policy values either ignore cache data or do some part of the default workflow. Open the Halfteens app in Demo Starter. The view group has a track cell configured with a track object, a download object, and a downloaded flag. A track has name, artist, and URL. A download also has a URL, a flag is downloading, and a progress value. It also has a task and some resume data. The track cell also has actions for the download, cancel, and pause or resume buttons. Each action just calls the delegate method here in Search View Controller. Each delegate method locates the track object for the cell and then calls one of the download methods. Pause download, resume download, etc. In this starter version, start download and pause download are just stubs. We're going to fill in start download. First, create a new download object from the tracks URL. And then create a download task with the same URL. We're using a download task instead of a data task because we want to store the data in a file, not in memory. And for the completion handler, we'll just save the download. Right here is the save download helper method, and it will copy the data from its location to a local file path, which is another helper method, into the document directory. So now we have a download task. We resume it. We set is downloading to true. And then we store the download in the active downloads dictionary. Now we'll just build and run. We'll search for some songs. And we'll start downloading something. The cancel button works, but not the pause. And when the buttons disappear, then it means the Snippet has downloaded, and we can go ahead and play it. And here I sit, and I'm a we could implement pause now, but at the time of recording this, there's an iOS bug that's fixed by using a background session, so I'll show you that in the next video. Now we have a challenge waiting for you. In the previous video's challenge, you created a data task with a put request. Your challenge is to change this to an upload task. Follow the instructions in the Challenge Starter Playground. If you get stuck or you have problems, check out the Challenge Solution video. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time. The main difference between a data task and an upload task is you pass the data directly to the upload task instead of storing it first in the request. But we have a post router enumeration in sources, so we can just use that to create a put request to update post1 to author part 6 and title upload task. And now we just create an upload task with put request. This from parameter wants JSON encoded data, which post router has already stored in the request's HTTP body. So we just pass that to upload task. And we'll write the usual completion handler.
So we check for the data response with status code 200. And then we go ahead and JSON decode our data into a post with ID. And now resume the put task. And check again that you've, are you running your JSON server? And run the playground. And the decoder says that we've got back the post that we posted. And we can look again in rested. Send the request. And yes, we've updated post number one with upload task part six.